In the first sketch, we talked about why we should be making disciples in our ministries. So let's just assume that we're making disciples, that this is really what Jesus called us to do. The next question is then, what does the finished product look like? In other words, what exactly is a disciple? What are the marks? What are the characteristics of a follower of Jesus? And if we can't really clearly define this, then nobody in our ministry, including ourselves, nobody will really know what we're making in the first place. So in this sketch, we're going to take a look at these three passages to get the picture in mind. But I want you to see this image first. We call this a full circle follower of Jesus. Someone who does three basic things. Now, there could be five or 12 or 100. There are a lot of things that followers of Jesus can do. But we've boiled it down to this simple three-part framework. We call it becoming a full circle follower of Jesus. The first thing comes from Romans 3.22. Paul says, We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Now, Paul obviously here is talking about coming to faith. We call it coming to your faith moment, your defining moment of faith. Putting your faith in Jesus Christ, because after all, if we're not leading people to trust Jesus for salvation, well then, really, what are we doing, right? So the first part of discipleship is evangelism. The first thing that we do when we make disciples is we teach people to trust Jesus for salvation. So a follower of Jesus starts a relationship with God by trusting Jesus, not by trying to be a better person, not by trying to make up for their past sins, but by recognizing that Jesus went to the cross and died for their sins. And that's the only way to start a relationship with God. So that's the first thing. And then that leads to the second thing, which we find here in 2 Corinthians 5. Paul says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. It seems like so many people in today's world get the wrong idea about grace. That grace gives us a license to sin and that once we sort of pray the prayer and become a Christian, it doesn't really impact the rest of our world or our life, our family life, our choices, our business, whatever. But that is not true at all. You know, when you read God's word, Paul was pretty passionate about this, saying that we don't use grace as a license to sin. If we're in Christ, we should be new people from the inside out. We should allow God to transform us. And so we say that a follower of Jesus is marked by this second thing, that we live to honor God. Our choices, our actions, our lifestyle, our attitudes. After all, in Matthew 28, Jesus said, go make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and then teach them to obey everything I've commanded. That is the second thing, learning to live to honor God in your everyday life. And then that leads to this third thing. And there's evidence for this all over the Bible, but we're going to look at John chapter 15. Jesus speaking to his disciples, sort of in that section in John where he's giving them his final pep talk before he goes away and leaves. He says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. What's interesting is I think that they were getting into this mentality, the, the disciples were, that they loved their little small group, that Jesus was pouring into them and loving them. But he's saying to them, it's time for you guys to realize I chose you, you didn't choose me, and I chose you for a specific task. I want you to go bear fruit. And I think if you look at the context for this in John 15, he is very clearly talking about making disciples. And these words weren't just for the original 12. These words are for all of us. Every single follower of Jesus is supposed to make disciples. And this third thing is the thing I think that most ministries get wrong or leave out or forget to emphasize. You know, we talk about trusting Jesus. We talk about sanctification and living to honor God in your life and in your lifestyle, making good choices. But very few of us really see to it that the people in our ministries are making disciples. And I think it breaks the heart of God. Because his picture for us, his picture for our ministries and our churches, is that everyone there understands that they were chosen to go help someone else, not just to be a consumer Christian. Now, you can learn about all three of these things, how we define a disciple in our foundation series. That's where we talk about trusting Jesus, honoring God, and making disciples. But the goal here is to make sure that everyone knows what a disciple is. A disciple isn't just somebody who studies the Bible. It's not just someone who goes to church. 
It's not someone who knows Greek or Hebrew. A disciple goes so much deeper than that. It's someone who knows how to love God and love others. And they illustrate that. It's evidenced in the fact that they go out and help other people pursue God. Again, you can learn more about how to do it at our mentor page. But in the next session, we're going to break it down specifically. Now that we know the why and the what of disciple making, we're going to break down how to actually do it with our tools.